A recent report says that despite recent military gains against Al-Shabaab, Somali security services are unlikely to be fully ready when African Union forces leave the country by the end of 2024. The report by the Heritage Institute for Political Studies predicts there will be delay in the drawdown of the African Transitional Mission troops in Somalia. The U.S. Vincent McCory spoke via Skype with Paul Williams, co-author of the report and professor at the George Washington University here in Washington. It's a tight timeline that the Somali federal government faces. And obviously the main thing that we found in the report is that the Somali authorities remain heavily dependent on external security assistance from a range of international partners who provide equipment, vehicles, weapons, ammunition, training and, and field advising to Somali soldiers. And this puts the Somali federal government in a difficult position. It's got an army that it cannot afford and it's fighting an enemy that it cannot defeat at the moment. And so over the longer term, the Somali government needs to develop an army that's uh, affordable. Uh, and the other big conclusion that we found, of course, is that not all those external partners are equal. Uh, they're not all equally important. Over the last few years, uh, the United States of America and Turkey have been the absolutely key players supporting the building of a new Somali national army. The Americans with the Danab Advanced Infantry Brigade and the Turkish government supporting the Gorgor or Eagle um, Infantry Battalions. And so working effectively together, the Somali government, the Americans and the Turks is going to be crucial. But it's going to be a very, very tight timeline for the end of 24 to get all these things working um, on their own before the African force withdraws. You're implying that uh, the withdrawal by that time is uh, sending a kind of a political message, is a political signal, and it's also about donor fatigue rather than uh, looking at the realities on the ground. Can you elaborate a little bit? As you may recall, in April of 2022, the old African Union mission in Somalia, AMISOM, transitioned into the new African transition mission in Somalia, ATMIS. And that really didn't change a whole lot of things on the ground in the field in Somalia, but it was more a political signal from the donor community that was supporting the African Union mission and sending a signal to the Somali authorities saying, look, this African Union force is not going to be here forever. The external partners that are providing the funding and the logistical support to this mission, they are starting to fatigue. Uh, the African Union force has been deployed since 2007, fighting Al-Shabaab. So this is now 16 years on. So, yeah, it was a political signal that the Somali authorities needed to get their act together and build a coherent and effective set of security forces before the African Union will withdraw its troops. Talking to Somali officials, they kind of put on a very, very brave face. They're telling us that uh, they have the capacity and the confidence that they can defeat al-Shabaab. Uh, now, do you think that's too ambitious for them? I think that's a stretch, personally, but I will say there's, I think, good news and, and bad news. The good news is that there has definitely been some progress. If you look at the state of the Somali National Army today, compared to just, say, five or ten years ago, there's a, a large degree of improvement in terms of the amount of troops, their training and their, their effectiveness. And secondly, since the uh, start of offensive operations against al-Shabaab in August of last year, we've definitely seen that the Somali army can work with local clan-based militias and, and self-defense forces. We've seen American Danab-trained um, troops and Turkish Gorgor-trained troops collaborate effectively in the field to push al-Shabaab out of a, a number of towns. But that in of itself is not going to lead, I think, to the military defeat of al-Shabaab anytime soon. And that's why there's still going to be a struggle. There's also, as I mentioned, a financial problem for the Somali government in that it's still relying heavily on external financing to build and train and equip this army. And so that's a problem it's going to have to overcome as well.